Rick Santelli is standing by at the CME in Chicago. And Rick, take it away. Yes, this is exciting. Our first look at third quarter GDP, 2.8%. We didn't grab that three handle, 2.8%. Many were looking for three. 2.9-ish was probably the highest estimate in terms of percentages. Rearview mirror is 3%, of course. And the quarter before that was 1.6, so you could see where 2.8 fits in. Let's look at consumption, shall we? Uh, we're expecting a number around 3.2%. Zoom, 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 3.7%. 3.7%. That's the best, going all the way back to the first quarter of 23 to 23. That should boost yields a little bit. And if we look at the price index, expecting 1.9, rearview mirror 2.5. Good news, 1.8, 1.8. 1.8's the lightest since it was 1.5 the last quarter of 23. So, you know, you two ways to look at it. Nice progress, but been there, done that at a lower level already. And if we look at core price index quarter over quarter, same scenario. Came in very close to expectations at 2.2 well below 2.8, and 2.2 fits in last quarter of 23, when it was 2.0, 2.0. We see yields now hovering right around 426 and a half ish And do keep in mind, before ADP, that was at 422. And before ATP, ADP, the two-year, which is now just a whisker below 414, was at 408. So you see these yields moving up and led by the short end, which makes sense because of the implications for the Fed. Of course, the Fed lowered rates because of a weak labor market. We've seen very few signs of that. On the inflation front, regional areas to Germany have seen hotter inflation already released. Top of the hour, we see the actual German number. You want to pay very close attention to some of those across the pond numbers. And finally, we still have many important data points for the rest of the week. Tomorrow, employment cost index, personal income, the PCE numbers. So this is going to be a very, very big week. And it's the quiet period because of the next Fed meeting. Becky, back to you.